Okay, so I'm going to show some examples of finding resultants of different types of distributed loads. On the left, we have a beam that has a partially distributed load over 20 feet of the beam. And on the right, we have a linearly increasing load, like a snowdrift, over an entire beam. In order to find the resultants, what we need to do is find the uh, area of the loading diagram. and we need to find its centroid. Okay. So on the left here, if I look at the area of this, it is 200 pounds per foot times 20 feet, and that gives us 4,000 pounds. So the resultant of this rectangle is 4,000 pounds, and of course the center of a rectangle is at its center, is at its midpoint, so that's about right there, which would be 10 feet from the right end or 20 feet from the left end. Okay, So we would represent this as a single point load of 4,000 pounds, 20 feet from this end and 10 feet from this end. Okay. On the right, we have a, a triangle, the area of a triangle, 300 pounds per foot times 30 feet divided by 2. That's 1 half base times height. And that gives us 4,500 pounds. Notice we have pounds per foot times feet, so the feet cancel out and we get pounds. The centroid of a triangle is one-third of the distance from each end, so it's 10 feet from this end or 20 feet from this end. And in this case, we get a, cons a, a point load of 4,500 pounds, 10 feet from this end, and 20 feet from this end. And we can do this for multiple loads on the same beam. Let's go down and look at a little bit more complicated one. This is a trapezoidal load. and it's easy to find the area of a trapezoid. The area of a trapezoid is the average of the two heights times the base. So in this case, it would be 30 feet times 100 pounds per foot plus 300 pounds per foot divided by 2, or 6 thousand pounds. So that's not too difficult, but the question is where does that happen? Where is the centroid? Okay, which is not quite as easy to do. We know that it's probably it's going to be somewhere to the right of center, so somewhere to the right of center because it's it's heavily loaded on the right, but it's not uh, it's not as, as straightforward. So what I recommend we do is we turn this into two separate loading conditions. One, that's a hundred pounds per foot, and a second one that's a triangle that goes from zero to two hundred pounds per foot. It's two hundred because we've already accounted for one hundred pounds per foot down here. Now based on the previous example, we know that, that the centroid of a triangle is at one-third uh, uh, towards the higher end. So let's just find the two areas. The area of the top one is equal to 200 pounds per foot times 30 feet over 2 equals 3,000. And that occurs at <coughs> 20 feet from the left end. And the area of the bottom one is 100 pounds per foot times 30 feet is 3,000 pounds. And that happens at 15 feet from the left end. The total, 6,000 pounds, which checks Okay, so we get the same answer, which we'd expect, but we end up with two separate vectors. We have 3,000 pounds 
located right here. At 10 feet, and we have 3,000 pounds at 15 feet. Now we could leave it this way, or we could find the resultant of those two. To find the center of these two forces, uh, we can do it by inspection. We can see there's both of them are 3,000 pounds, so it should land right in the middle or halfway between 15 and 20 feet, but we could also do it mathematically when it's not that obvious. We do this by taking the sum of the moments about the left end. So we have some resultant that's going to land somewhere in here that's going to be the total of 6,000 pounds, but we don't know right now how far over it's going to be. Question mark. Let's call that x. What we do know is that 3,000 pounds times 15 feet plus 3,000 pounds times 20 feet. We have the first vector here times 15, and the second vector times a full. And this has to balance the 6,000 pounds times the unknown distance x. So we set these two equal to each other. This one gives us 45,000 pound-feet plus 60,000 pound-feet, which equals 105,000 pound-feet. And that has to equal 6,000 times x. So x is equal to 105,000 pound-feet divided by 6,000 pounds equals 17.5 feet. So x is equal to 17.5 feet. Now we noticed before that since these loads were equal, just happened to work out that way, that the center would be halfway between 15 and 20, which is indeed 17 and a half. So this is how we find resultants of different types of loads. And if I had multiple uh, loads next to each other, I would just find each individually and then use this last technique to find the resultant of two separate point loads.